Hello and welcome to Food Safety Fridays edition 116. My name is Simon Timpley from the International Food Safety and Quality Network. Welcome along today uh, to this webinar uh, that is the subject traceability and serialization applying the successes of pharma to food and that's with Janice Wortham uh, from Metal of Toledo I'll be introducing you to Janice shortly um, just to say um, yes some of you are already typing in the sidebar just uh, tell us where you're calling in from today and say hello to everybody uh, that's very nice um, get used to using the chat bar save your questions until until the Q&A at the end if you would or else they'll get lost in the scrolling um, just to say, uh, the Food Safety Fridays webinar program is sponsored by uh, none other than Messler Toledo, Trace Analytics, AIB International, DNVGL Business Assurance, and Safe Food 360. They support this program and help to bring these regular um, short bursts of uh, education for you. Um, it is being recorded today. Um, we will follow up with an email later as we always do with the recording the slides and the certificate so if you miss a bit get called away don't worry um you'll get to see it no doubt uh okay uh, are you there janice yes i'm here very good uh nice to have you with us it's your first time with uh food safety in fact it's your first ever webinar isn't that right it is it is my first ever webinar as well as with this network well, we'll be very gentle with you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, where you. Can you let the audience know where you're calling in from today? Yes, I'm calling in from New Jersey in the United States. I'm uh, based in what we like to call South Jersey, which today is a rainy region and just located outside of Philadelphia. Well, it's very nice to have you with us, Janice. So I'll, I'll get your presentation up and uh, we'll get cracking. Uh, I'll be back uh, for the Q&A later. Uh, but for now, I'll hand you over to Janice. Great. Thank you, Simon. Well, thank you to everyone from around the world who took the time to dial into this Friday's webinar to learn more about serialization and how it can be used in the pharma industry and what benefits the food industry could achieve. In today's presentation, I will introduce food safety as one of the primary issues that traceability aims to address. I will then proceed to define serialization. Next, I will take an in-depth look at the use of serialization in the pharmaceutical industry in the U.S. supply chain. I will describe the regulation behind serialization, how the U.S. is implementing serialization in their supply chain, and explore what value pharma companies have identified beyond compliance. Then we will turn to the food industry to examine similar issues with limited visibility into the supply chain, how serialization could be applied, and what value can be found from the supply chain intelligence that serialization offers. So let's get started. So why are we here? In two words, consumer influence. We know from experience and industry reports that consumer optimism is high. It has been reported in 2014 that 70% of consumers surveyed were likely to buy brands with a commitment to food safety. The responders defined food safety as a number of attributes, including health and well-being, food safety that we know within this network, plus safe packaging, accurate labeling, and natural and organic ingredient illustration. However, following a recall, consumer trust significantly falls. 64% would probably not buy the same brand within 6 to 12 months of a recall. There is a caveat as 66% would forgive a brand if they trusted them on food safety. The issue of food safety has heightened for various reasons over the years. An earlier study in 2007 showed less distrust with brands following a recall with only 21% avoiding a brand following a recall. Food safety is the main area of concern for all manufacturers. A good reputation takes a long time to build and sustain. However, a food safety breach can instantly make or break a brand. So let's look at the state of the marketplace. 
We know that product recalls are on the rise. However, as food safety advocates, we should look at this in context. As an industry, we now produce more food products to accommodate the growth in population. Products are also more complex with new ingredients and combinations. Food standards are also more stringent, and with good reason, as the supply chain has become increasingly globalized and complex. However, the business and global impact of product recalls cannot be ignored. In the U.S., it is estimated that the average cost of a recall for food companies is 10 million U.S. dollars. In some cases, this is just the direct costs. Add in the costs associated with lost sales and brand damage, and you can easily see why investing in traceability can have an immediate return on investment. When things go wrong, news spreads fast these days with the rise in social media. A strong recall communication strategy is vital to appear transparent, authentic, and proactive about how a brand looks after their consumers. Now let's take a closer look at serialization technology, followed by how the U.S. pharma industry is using serialization to better manage recalls and protect consumers from unsafe products. First, we need to define serialization. Serialization means unique identification of a saleable product. Think of it like the VIN number on a car. It pertains to the unit level or the saleable unit and is a unique number for identical products, but a unique number assigned to each identical product. The use of serialization and traceability involves moving away from the idea of tracing product units at a generic level, where each product unit is only defined as part of a larger batch of products to which it belongs, or lot level tracing. Using serialization requires changes to labeling on product packaging. Supply chain partners also must include serial number data when they record, update, verify, exchange, and store information about the product in all transactions. Labeling on packaging will include human readable serial numbers or data carriers like 2D codes or QR codes encoded with serial numbers, or packaging can have both a human readable number and a barcode. The use of GS1 standards facilitates interoperability among supply chain partners when exchanging serial number based data. The Electronic Product Code Information Services, or EPCIS, defines a data model and a data sharing interface enabling supply chain partners to capture and communicate data about movement and status of products in the supply chain. EPCIS breaks down supply chain business processes into individual steps, commissioning, packing, shipping, receiving, and so forth, and provides a standard language in which a party carrying out one of these steps can communicate the essential business information about that step to trading partners who need to know the what, when, where, and why of each step. Each such step is called an event, and the term EPCIS event refers to the data record that describes an event using the standard EPCIS language. So now let's take a deeper dive into the U.S. pharma supply chain and the use of serialization for traceability. The pharmaceutical supply chain in the United States started on its path to implementing serialization for traceability with the Drug Quality and Security Act, DQSA, which was enacted by Congress on November 27th in 2013. Title II of DQSA, the Drug Supply Chain Security Act, or the DSCSA, please don't try to say that too fast, DSCSA, outlines the steps to build an electronic interoperable system to identify and trace certain prescription drugs as they are distributed in the United States. The regulation is meant to enhance the FDA's ability to help protect consumers from exposure to drugs that may be counterfeit, stolen, contaminated, or otherwise harmful. The system will also improve detection and removal, we call this recalls, 
of potential dangerous drugs from the supply chain to protect U.S. customers. The law is rolling out in phases. The first phase in 2015 started with lot level traceability. The most recent phase as of November 27, 2018 called for manufacturers to serialize the saleable unit and homogenous case for distribution in the U.S. supply chain. Since that date, prescription drugs must be labeled with the DSCSA product identifier, meaning a unique serial number, as well as the static national drug code number, lot number, which is variable, expiry date, which is variable, all printed in human readable form, and then encoded in a 2D data matrix code. By this November, wholesale distributors will begin using unique identifiers, serial numbers, to verify returns before reselling them. By next year, November 2020, purchases and sales of drug products by all supply chain members must be serialized. And finally, by November 2023, all supply chain members tracking purchases and sales by serial numbers on the unit level packaging and cases. Collaboration among all stakeholders is ongoing since the regulation started to ensure interoperability. So let's look closely at how the packaging evolved with the addition of serialization. Many pharma manufacturers transitioned to serialized packaging in phases, while some waited and changed over in a single step directly before the deadline date. Saleable units were already pre-printed or inline printed with lot, expiry date, and barcodes. Next, GTINs, global trade identification numbers, specific to a product, along with a 2D data matrix code containing the lot expiry were added. Printing technologies on packaging lines were updated to enable 2D code printing. Others considered use of pre-printed or pre-serialized labeling or cartons. Finally, the serial numbers were added in human readable form and encoded to the 2D data matrix code. This did involve artwork changes on packaging as these were often needed to provide the space available uh, for human readable GTINs and serial numbers and 2D codes. This year, the work is focused at the wholesalers for verification process of inbound shipments. The last steps in the transition will be for all supply chain partners to exchange and report data for saleable units using serial numbers. So let's talk about aggregation, because that's a big part of the serialization efforts in the United States. Aggregation, as it pertains to serialization, is the exercise of recording all serial numbers at a packaging level. For example, individual saleable cartons or individual saleable products and grouping these under another serial number when they are packed into the next level of packaging. For example, a bundle of saleable cartons or a bundle of saleable bottles or a shipper case of either. It involves building a parent-child relationship across multiple levels of packaging used when shipping products through the supply chain in order to avoid unpacking an entire pallet or case or bundle of products to facilitate the process of inbound shipment verification at the next step in the supply chain after those products have left the manufacturer. While the U.S. FDA regulation for serialization intended for aggregation to be in use by the final phase of 2023, and there is debate among some stakeholders to not use aggregation, many pharma manufacturers are aggregating their saleable products, at least to the case, and providing these details to wholesalers to enable a more efficient verification process at the wholesaler level. In this illustration, individual cartons are serialized. Each has a unique serial number assigned to it. When they are bundled together, the bundle is labeled with a unique serial number and the individual carton serial numbers are recorded and associated with the serial number on the bundle. Let's assume six bundles of 10 cartons each are packed into a case. The case will be labeled with a unique serial number that is associated to the unique serialized bundles 
as well as the unique serialized cartons packed inside those bundles. The last step is to record the 50 serialized cases packed onto the pallet, which is then assigned its own unique serial number on the pallet label. Aggrava aggregation, sometimes referred to as aggravation, but aggregation defines the data relationship between the parent and child and allows the receiver of the product shipment, mainly wholesalers in the pharmaceutical supply chain, to scan one code and understand exactly which serial numbers are in the whole shipment, whether they're scanning at the pallet level, case level, or down to the bundle level, but more importantly, they can understand the individual saleable unit levels without pack unpacking down from the case level. So let's look at serialization and aggregation in terms of the pharma packaging line, where the actual packaging process is being done. The process in pharma packaging to serialize and aggregate includes technology with machine vision systems, barcode scanners, product handling, including fully automated packaging machinery or product handling stations to enable more semi-automated or manual end-of-line packaging operations. Serial numbers are generated either randomly or consecutively in line level software. The, ser the smallest saleable unit must be printed or labeled with the human readable unique serial number, as well as the global trade identification number, lot code, expiry date, and 2D data matrix code. Saleable units can be packed into a bundle or packed directly into the shipping case. A new serialized 2D code for the bundle or the case is created once the number of correct items are packed and verified that have been put into that bundle or direct into the case. Cases are then palletized to the desired pallet size and a pallet labeler prints a serialized pallet label. All parent-child relationships are stored in the database for cases, bundles, and pallets to capture all the relationships and the hierarchies. At each step, the 2D code and variable data are inspected with a vision system. That could be a smart camera. In some cases, uh, when we get down to the bundle and case and pallet level, it could be a hand scanner just scanning the 2D code. And the data is compared to the, accuracy, to the database for accuracy. If the 2D code is correct, as well as variable data, the serial number of the saleable unit is commissioned, meaning being recorded to the database. When the entire packaging process is complete, all serialization data, including the serial numbers used for the entire lot, together with the batch details for the products that were manufactured, are transferred to ERP systems and our cloud systems so that the data can be captured for the outbound shipment when filling orders. The serial data will be shared with the next supply chain partner. In pharma, this is typically the wholesaler who expects to receive the goods for their inbound verification of the serial numbers. So let's take a look at the, the pharma supply chain in regards to serialization data exchange. After a pharma product is manufactured and packaged, it is shipped directly to a wholesale distributor through a, or through a third-party logistics provider, a 3PL. Wholesale distributors, including primary and secondary distributors, are responsible for maintaining the integrity of medicines from the manufacturer to the dispenser, which distributes the medicine to the patients. Distributors are the important link between more than 1,000 manufacturers and more than 200,000 dispensers in the United States. Dispensers can be hospitals, long-term care facilities, healthcare clinics, physician offices, and pharmacies, some of which may be small independent drugstores and others of which may be part of a ch chain of drugstores. The use of serialization seeks to further enhance the security of this supply chain. Manufacturers and some repackagers are already serializing products. Wholesale distributors and dispensers must only accept products that are serialized. And again, we're talking about the saleable unit. For full end-to-end -end traceability, using serialization, manufacturers, repackagers, wholesale distributors, and dispensers, there will be systems and processes in place to verify the serial numbers require products to be traceable at the lot level. The second phase of requirements in effect by 2020, 
3 includes the interoperable electronic tracing of products at the package level using serial numbers. In Phase 2, a one-up, one-back model will be in effect. Under this approach, each supply chain participant must, ca must capture the transaction information associated with its own receipt and distribution of a product, which comprehensively will allow the product to be traced back to the manufacturer. In the U.S. supply chain, pharma regulations do not specifically require the use of EPCIS, but GS1 U.S. and its member companies have worked to create a method for applying EPCIS and GS1 standards to meet the requirements of the U.S. regulation. And the U.S. supply chain is adopting EPCIS as the preferred method for meeting the data exchange requirements. Blockchain could address the challenge of interoperability for data sharing in complex supply chains like pharma. Blockchain, for the de by definition, is a software providing a digital ledger system to log and record transactions by grouping them in chronologically ordered blocks. These blocks are linked and secured on a peer-to-peer -peer network using cryptography technology. As the, as the technology is evenly distributed across a network of multiple computers, it has no centralized point of entry, giving added security from cyber threats. The system is also built to be transparent and secure. Those within the chain can view the individual block transactions, but cannot alter those, after, after, alter those that they are not a part of. They can only add further detail. Blockchain is being studied among the pharma supply chain stakeholders. It is, it is or will be included in the FDA pilots for the Drug Supply Chain Security Act as a technology that, that could support the requirements for electronic product tracing with serialization. One such project, the Metal Edger project, is working to establish a blockchain solution to the U.S. pharma supply chain for compliance with the DSCSA. The goal is to leverage blockchain's capabilities to create an interoperable system in which multiple parties, again including manufacturers, wholesale distributors, hospitals and pharmacies, can register, verify, and transfer pharmaceutical project, product information with absolute trust in their authenticity and provenance. The project is an industry-wide collaborative effort among all stakeholders that not only compete, but of course also trade with each other. So let's talk about the value of serialization beyond compliance in pharma. Pharma companies started exploring the value of serialization beyond compliance to find further returns on their investment. The short-term value is easily recognized and primarily leads to patient or consumer safety. Ultimately, brands are protected when consumers are protected and do not lose confidence to purchase products due to issues with counterfeit or safety recalls. Counterfeits can be recognized throughout the supply chain by verifying serial numbers. Recalls can be targeted and managed more efficiently and quickly when the supply chain has the ability to specifically track product down to the specific region or pharmacies that were supplied versus a wide recall affecting the entire distribution network because the supply chain is not transparent and has wide distribution of products. Targeted recalls can limit the size of recalls so the market is not emptied of product unnecessarily as can happen with a mass untargeted recall, which leads to product shortages. Reasons for recalls could be linked back to production and packaging to identify root causes. When products are diverted in the supply chain and those products are found, the serial numbers can be traced back to the point in the supply chain where the products were diverted. Processing of returns using serialization can provide additional can, can address potential for duplicate refunds or rebates, and it can confirm that the product being returned is real and authentic. Looking at the long-term value, long-term gains are achieved in gaining data about the product as it travels in the supply chain from production to distribution center to wholesalers, retailers, and through to end consumer. Supply chain planning and operations can improve demand forecasting, production planning, 
inventory management, and shelf life management with increased visibility to consumption. Sales forecasting accuracy will improve as more real-time data flows into your supply chain. As the product moves through the supply chain and touches various points, distributors, 3PL, warehouse, and dispensement to patients, greater visibility of product movements will become apparent, which will enable smarter sales forecasting. More transparency into distribution enables sales and marketing to see how effective their efforts are or where they need to be focused on a regional effort. The same databases used to track serial data can, tra can track metrics in manufacturing and packaging processes like uptime, downtime, and quality issues affecting production, which can be analyzed for process or overall operational efficiency. Consumer reach could be possible with authentication technology based on serialization, enabling the consumer to interact with the unique product they have purchased and ultimately the brand owner to support patients better and more directly with additional product information. Overall, the serialization triggers changes in business process throughout the supply chain that result in more secure processes to receive, verify, report, inbound and outbound shipments. Exceptions must be accounted for when serialization is involved to maintain the integrity of accurate data exchange. So now let's turn to the food industry. In looking at food companies, they face the same challenges as pharmaceutical companies. Limited visibility into the supply chain to address cheap to address key challenges of not only recalls and recall management and risk mitigation, but also product quality out of stocks, fraudulent or diverted products for high-end items, and on the marketing side, consumer loyalty, wallet share spending, and consumer reach. Business groups operate as silos as they gather information about potential issues within their business unit with limited supply chain intelligence. Potential issues are addressed on a reactive basis within the business groups, often based on limited, incomplete, or inaccurate data that is not presented in real time. Each business unit has goals and challenges within their own set of rules and outcomes without access to the full big picture and granular details about the products and their movement across the supply chain to the final consumer. Serialization data. The use of ser unit level serialization data to track and trace products in the food supply chain has the potential to connect all business units with the supply chain intelligence they need to make quick decisions. It's possible to transform from reactive decision making to proactive decision making when real time specific granular data about the product through its movement in the supply chain is captured and available to all business units within the organization. Let's look at the food supply chain. So let's assume a food supply chain with serialization at the saleable unit level for a packaged food product. Data from ingredients and processing of the food product can be captured for each individual packed product of food by associating it with the original serial number generated for each individual food package. Additional data from the upstream process can be captured in that serial number. As the, as the package of food travels throughout the supply chain, additional data can be captured around its transport, conditions of transport, receipt, outbound shipping, etc. Every time the product changes hands, it will be verified at inbound and verified at outbound, with each supply chain partner including data about their handling of the product, the what, when, where, and why. This includes transaction data, such as time of production, best before dates, as well as visibility event data, temperature log is one example, which is the what, when, where, and why of real-time monitoring. Once it reaches the consumer, the serial number on the individual saleable package has all the supply chain intelligence associated to it, providing its traceable history throughout the entire end-to-end -end supply chain from raw ingredient to consumer.
When we look at food supply chain and GS1 standards, GS1 standards currently support some end-to-end -end traceability systems. They do provide the linking and aligning of the flow of information through the supply chain to physical products. The use of increased GS1 standards in food could support serialization just as it is being used in the pharmaceutical industry today to enable all parties to use the same master data, transaction data, and event data by definition. GS1 standards enable ease and efficient and accurate data communication among the supply chain parties for interoperability. The EPCIS again defines that data model and data sharing interface as well as the core business vocabulary provides standard definitions of data elements that populate the what, when, where, and why of EPCS data. The important takeaway is the alignment exchange and recording of traceability data between trading partners involves not only master data, transaction data, but visibility event data. So what value can be driven from the use of serialization in the food industry? Well, the same values that the pharma industry is identifying from its investment in using serialization for supply chain traceability can be applied to food. The benefits can be identified on the supply chain side as well as the consumer side. Recalls and, the mitigate, and mitigating the associated risk to consumers, manufacturers, and supply chain partners or retailers is at the top of the list. Recalling mislabeled or unsafe food products rapidly is currently a challenge. If the distribution of batches or lots is not tracked through the distribution and retail channels, then the recall cannot be done precisely, requiring a costly general recall of all products. The time to recall products can mean the difference between illness and prevention. Tracking locations of products with serial numbers enables the supply chain to pinpoint where a specific batch was distributed and sold in the supply chain to the retail locations. Targeted recalls versus mass recalls can can reduce the impact of the recall and the time to complete the recall. It can improve or even save a brand's reputation as well as save consumers from harm or illness. Early intervention is enabled when, which can reduce costs and errors as problems may be predicted before products get to retailers or consumers with enhanced real-time supply chain monitoring. Demand forecasting production planning, inventory management, or some of the improvements that can be made when tracking movements and consumptions of individual serialized products in real time. There is potential to reduce waste, reduce overstocks, and improve replenishment planning and accuracy with more supply chain intelligent gain, intelligence gained from serialization. Overall process improvement can be achieved with analysis of data from end-to-end -end processes from manufacturing through distribution when dwell times, unnecessarily handling, or poor execution become more transparent. Addressing fraudulent or diverted products in the supply chain is enabled as serialization requires verification of the saleable units at all points in the supply chain and can identify suspicious products as well as pinpoint missing or diverted products at the point in the supply chain where the diversion occurred. On the consumer side, serialization enables product authentication unique to each serial number on each saleable unit where the consumer can use their smartphone to scan a serialized code on the package and receive proof of product authenticity directly from the brand owner or manufacturer. Information regarding the specific pedigree of that specific product in that specific package can be obtained directly by the consumer on pedigree, the actual ingredients, and the sourcing of those ingredients for the product from raw ingredients to manufacturing to finished product. Sharing of pedigree information on the individual serialized package being purchased increases the consumer's confidence to purchase and in the end protects the brand and its image with the consumer. The brand owner or marketer of the products can reach consumers directly beyond the retailer and receive additional intelligence about the buyer. This can be accomplished by requiring online registrations for additional rebates or coupons to build brand loyalty 
for continued purchase of the product, which builds market share at the individual consumer level. And now for a summary of the key points from today. Serialization gives each identical saleable product a unique identity to which data can be assigned. The easiest example when you think of serialization on a product or a saleable unit is a VIN number on a car. Shifting, it is definitely a shift from lot level traceability to unit level serial number traceability in the supply chain. Pharma is driving value from serialization well beyond compliance to realize a return of investment. The ability to transform to proactive decisions based on real-time data, analysis, and comprehensive understanding of the issues is possible. Unit-level traceability provides data for actionable process improvement and risk mit mitigation directly related to food safety and quality. Serialization can also provide reach beyond the retailer to the consumer. And finally, the key in pharma has been the collaboration across all stakeholders in the supply chain to drive successful implementation. And now we can move to the Q&A part of our webinar today. Okay, thanks very much for that, uh, Janice. Um, right, uh, let's see. Um, yes, question from, can you see the uh, comments on the sidebar? Janice? I can't, I can't see them actually. All right, if you click the second icon down. Um, oh, now I can. That, yeah, okay, uh, I, I will read it out. Slightly long one from James Delamere. How would reusable packaging such as trays used to carry loaves of bread which are loaded with products then used to distribute the products are then returned to the bakery days or weeks later be labeled and tracked? So returnable trays, uh, how can you label and track them, I think is the question. So if I'm understanding the question, so these trays are loaded with product then used to distribute the product, then return to the bakery. So, so the trays are used as a carrier. So if you apply the logic as we did in pharma, they would be, I would say, the case level, but the individual loaves of bread, the packaging that those are actually um, distributed to the consumer, and those would have the serial level or the serial number tracking on them. Okay, so it is applicable. It can be used in that way. Um, what, what are the barriers to using this technology, uh, Janice? Are, are there any barriers? I would say um, there's a lot of change required when you look at the levels of packaging. Um, definitely a barrier could be if you, if you can't realize changes on your packaging, so changes in labeling. That would be one particular barrier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's move to the next one. Uh, Martha, uh, is serialization an individual corporation's responsibility or organized by large organizations such as GS1? Well, that's a very good question. Um, you know, pharma, pharma has been driven to do this because of a regulation. Not only the regulation in the United States, there's regulations in Europe, the Middle East, and throughout the world. Um, when we look at food, there's no current regulations. Uh, the food companies that have expressed an interest in serialization are doing this based on their own corporate responsibility, their, their belief that they need to secure the supply chain and, and uh, secure food safety and quality for their consumers. It also lends itself to protecting their brands as well. So, no, GS1 is not necessarily um, responsible for driving serialization. They're supporting it through the use of standards. Okay, great. That's clear. Um, Chris Thomas, uh, if you serialize every container and you need to withdraw products, you can request the consumer scan the QR code or the serial number to see if that particular product is part of the real recall. It's that uh, clever. Is it, uh, Janice? 
Yes, I think that is a long-term potential that a consumer could potentially scan their product and then look at the internet to put that number in or, or directly through their, their smartphone and find out if that product is on a recall list. I know recently um, I received a phone call from the grocery store for a product that um, was being recalled. I'd already had the product in my possession for a month. Luckily, I didn't really like it so much, so I didn't eat too much of it. Um, had, I, had I heard about it sooner, I could have used my smartphone um, if I'd seen it on the news and scanned the product and, and been alerted a lot sooner than the grocery store actually finally reaching me. Wait a minute. So you purchased a product from the grocery store and they knew that you'd purchased that product? They did. But what the scary part was, I purchased the product the last week of December. They contacted me the end of January. I have no idea how long that product was even on the shelf before I picked it up to purchase it. And then mm. I didn't get contacted for a full month later. So probably mm. in a larger household, I'm sure that product would have been fully consumed. Mm. And it, was it linked through your credit or debit card then? It was linked through my, my frequent Bill. buyer card. So when ah, I right. when I registered at the grocery store, they must have looked it up through the UPC. For me, I was excited that they called me, but I was disappointed and scared that it took a, a full month to reach me and I had eaten some of the product. Luckily, I, I wasn't sick. I didn't have any adverse yeah. effects or anything. Okay. <laughs> um, Kevin Driggers, what software or method would be helpful in generating these images? Uh, I'm not sure which images you're referring to. Do you mean the putting, uh, the applying of the serial numbers on the actual packaging? I think, I think he, he might mean that. Okay. So, so, so there's, there's many different vendors now that have, uh, that have popped up with the, uh, the introduction of serialization in pharma that can offer not only uh, applying the numbers, but correct printing of them and correct verification of them. We refer to them as packaging line serialization vendors, if you will. So they will provide you with the software as well as the, um, the vision systems and the printing technology to actually print the serial numbers or the the serialized codes on your packaging. There's also companies that can produce pre-serialized labels or pre-serialized packaging. Okay, and uh, well, that goes on to Stephanie as well. What equipment is needed to have this program in place? Um, yeah. Sure. So, so from the food manufacturer standpoint, it involves um, software, product handling, and printing systems to generate serialized packaging where you're doing your food packaging for the unit level. Mm -hmm. And uh, just as uh, Methyl Toledo, uh, your company, they can assist with, um, what, what would you do if a company said, oh, we want to serialize our products? Do you go in and look at their business, et cetera? We would, we would go in and look at their business and how they're currently packaging. Um, what their saleable units look like, how they're currently packaged and printed, make some recommendations. And we actually provide the line and packaging site level solution for serialization to enable companies to print or verify serial numbers when they're doing their packaging and cap uh, capture that information. We partner with other companies on the enterprise level systems and the business level systems to uh, provide the data for connecting the entire supply chain. Okay. And so in pharma now, is it widely used then? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's widely used in the U.S. Um, it, is a, it is a phased in approach in regards to the regulation. So not everything is completely in place. We still have parts of the supply chain getting their systems in place. Everything will be in order by 2023 for the regulation deadline. That's what all the stakeholders, the wholesalers, and the dispensers are working towards. Mm -hmm. And um, but there are some food businesses starting to adopt adopt the technology as well. We are we are seeing inquiries from food companies 
interested to learn the technology, yes, to understand how it will impact their business and how they could utilize it for food safety as well as counterfeit and diverted products. Okay. Um, Rokshanara, uh, how does serialization, how can it apply for direct selling food facility? Um, well, direct selling, does that mean restaurants and, you know, I'm not sure. Can you clarify what you mean by that, Rock Shanara? Uh, if it's um, sort of catering, do you mean that sort of rest, restaurants, hotels, cafes, and that type of thing? Um, I, I think I can address it. If, okay, you're talking yeah, okay. about, if you're talking about bulk food packaging, absolutely serialization could be used in bulk food packaging for use in restaurants where the food selling facility would receive the packages in and they could authenticate um, what they were expecting is real. So they could be tied into the supply chain too. The business case that I've made here has been more directly related to packaged food products for retail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, let's see. And then M. Lakshmanan. Uh, probably how fast do you think food industries will ch would change to this serialization mode of coding? Well, I think I think it's a I think it's a long term process to change over to this. If we look at just the U.S. supply chain, it's taking. 10 years to get everything in place with a phased in approach. So it started by getting serial numbers on the packaging. Now the supply chain partners are putting their systems in place to read and verify and report those serial numbers. So I think it can go as fast as the industry wants, but I, I don't think it's a year process. I think it's a five year to 10 year plan could be like mm -hmm. pharma. Definitely. Okay. I will say Europe moved a lot faster though than the U S but uh, I think the European supply chain and pharma isn't as vast as, as the, uh, as the amount of players in the U.S. supply chain. Okay, thank you. Uh, Giovanna, uh, what would you recommend if the product is too small to add a QR code? Just a, would just a serial number work? Uh, a serial number would work, but a serial number tends to be longer than a QR code. Um, it's amazing what we've seen from the printer companies um, what they've been able to achieve in the size of the QR codes for even the smallest pharmaceutical packaging. Um, the use of the use of 2D codes and QR codes in other industries like automotive gets down to very small sizes. Okay. Uh, Maria's asking uh, whether uh, it, this is compulsory for food packaging industry. Serialization is currently not compulsory. Um, in the food packaging industry. Um, in the U.S., FSMA is requiring more concrete, substantial plans for how recalls and how recall management will be managed. And this relates to how you can trace your products through the supply chain. Serialization is a vehicle to enhance traceability, but it's not compulsory yet. Okay. Uh, G. G. Nagalingam. I have a question. Well, feel free to type your question in if you have one. Uh, Asuzo, um, is there a particular, uh, let me just get that one up. Um, Asuzo, is there a particular training to be competent to carry out accurate serialization? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say there's a particular training. Um, the way it's been managed in pharmaceutical companies, it's, it's, a, it's involved cross-divisional, so it's involved engineering, um, quality, production, packaging, supply chain uh, participants to, to gather around the table to talk about how it will affect the packaging and how they deal with their downstream supply chain partners. So the vendors on the, on the side of the space providing to the pharmaceutical industry have been responsible for training in the use of the software and the use of the uh, physical technology to enable serialization. Okay. And, um, oh, Francisco is just saying it's not compulsory for food packaging, but could, could it be mandatory in the future? I mean, I, if I had a crystal ball, I would say yes, but no, I, mm. I really, I really don't know. I mean, there is a lot of talk throughout the, the globe, um, in, in different 
companies we meet with that yes, maybe it could become mandatory in the future, but there's been no hints that I can see of it becoming mandatory in the short term. Okay, thank you. Uh, Noah, can the use of this technology trace back to the farm level uh, be done to meet rules of origin requirements? Absolutely. So if the if the information is is gathered at the farm level and is reported and recorded with the serial numbers throughout the packaging and throughout the transport of the product, absolutely um, rules of origin details can be captured and encoded to those individual serial numbers on each packaged unit. Okay. Uh, any further questions? I mean, it, it's great, this this webinar. Um, you know, we have we webinars on all sorts of subjects, you know, um, things that uh, have existed in food safety for a long time. It could be risk assessment, HACCP or something, or it might be something that's sort of raising its head more and more like food fraud or something like that, that people have to comply with. And But it's great to have something that's, you know, really new to the food industry, you know, that, you know, gives us a heads up and um, perhaps, you know, when people do start talking about it in the future, we're already primed on it. Um, it's great. Uh, Safia, um, what is the most recommended chemical serialization used in production area of food industry? Chemical serialization. Does that make any sense to you? Uh, I think there might be a little confusion. So when we're talking about serialization, it is not sterilization. So serialization is the use of unique identifiers or unique numbers right. um, to identify identical products of the same type. Mm -hmm. So she mentions chemical, so I'm not sure how to address yes. that. Okay, let's uh, skip to the next one. Isabel, how... Uh, how does this compare with blockchain? So serialization doesn't replace blockchain. It can enhance blockchain efforts. So if an industry is using blockchain to um, share and report data, serialization can be a component of that. Okay. Um, and then G Nagalingam, how, how can amp ampules, ampules, be serialized. I don't even know what an ampule is. Oh, I know what an ampule is. So ampules are typically not serialized, at least in the U.S. supply chain and from what I know in the European supply chain, as they're not the, the saleable unit. It's typically um, a carton of ampules, whether it's individual or single ampules that would be serialized or uh, a tray of ampules. Now, if you wanted to serialize the individual ampule, yes, it's possible to laser etch 2D codes into glass. Um, I had seen that technology come out several years ago, but currently none of the regulations that I'm aware of uh, globally for pharma require serialization of the ampule level. It starts at the packaging level for the ampules. Just remind us what an ampule is. Oh, an ampule is an ampule is a glass structure in which liquid medicine is contained, and typically it's it's broken. It's for single use for. Um, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Tanya, will Metal Toledo offer serialization solutions for the cannabis industry? We have um, explored that industry, and we are willing to to support that industry in their serialization efforts. Yes. Okay, and just a comment from Avishek. Uh, hi from Fiji. Thank you for the training. Really helpful. I will try to work on some area of areas of traceability at work. Great. Thank you. That's good, isn't it? Um, G Nagalingam. I think ten years is too long. All consumers are with Android phones. I don't. I don't disagree. Um, it amazes me how long it's taking us to implement this in the in the U.S. supply chain. Uh, there has been a lot of pushback from different stakeholders, and I think the regulators gave an extremely large amount of time. Maybe I could make an assumption that if this was required in food or food uh, manufacturers and food supply chains wanted to implement it, it doesn't need to take 10 years. 
That's the actual timeline that the U.S. came up with. Mm -hmm. In Europe, we have a much shorter timeline for implementation. Okay. And this is just a, a comment from Chris. Uh, this could impact everything from marketing, consumer opinion, benchmarking and recalls. Could be a future game changer on how we analyze not just our quality programs, but our business programs overall, depending on, on how it is used. Yes, totally agree. Thank you for bringing that point up. And, and that was a major um, benefit beyond compliance. The, the ability to, to get this data to really understand what's going on from a marketing perception with our consumers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Towsy, uh, lots of questions, aren't they, Janice? Yes, uh, definitely. That's great. Uh, Towsy, what important rules will guide serialization of food packets or bags? I would say, I would say, the use of G GS1 standards will be important to get everyone on the same page um, in terms of exchanging data among the supply chain. The actual serialization on the food packets or the bags, um, I think a variety of different coding technologies can be explored. I don't think it has to be a, a, a definitive unless a regulation comes out like it has in pharma with the U.S. requiring 2D codes. Okay, uh, let's see, Pauline, just, we've already asked this, but I think she wants you to expand on it. So okay. what exactly is the difference between serialization and blockchain? Is one part of the other? Sure. No, blockchain, blockchain just simply addresses how data sharing will occur between the supply chain partners. So it's a type of software where you can log and record transactions um, into this software. So different parties can put their information in without um, affecting or uh, changing the data that others have initiated. It's different from serialization. Serialization is just the unique of uh, the use of unique serial numbers on the product packaging. And with blockchain, you can capture that data of the serial numbers. Okay. Hopefully. If that makes sense to you. It did to me. Uh, okay. Thanks, Janice. Uh, Avishek, serialization seems to be better a better option for food industry as well as it's all about food safety and consumer safety. I, I would agree. That's the main reason that drove pharma to look at um, serialization. They weren't able to sec secure their supply chain and manage counterfeit and diverted product and safe products effectively enough just with lot level tracking. Mm -hmm. And is it, obviously there's some on cost to it. It's more suited to higher value products at first maybe? Or it easily, could be, yeah. it could be. That's the general trend that we hear that, you know, maybe it'll start with higher food products. It could lend more, um, transparency for issues in their supply chains versus lower cost products. Hmm. And just, just uh, uh, going back a little while, we, it, we, all the talk was about ARFID, you know, re radio frequency ID, mm -hmm. you know, like little chips. And mm -hmm. is this sort of superseding that as a more cost effective thing? Or? Well, RFID tags are really just a carrier. So you can, you can have RFID tags enabled with serial numbers, but uh, we, we really saw a decline in interest in that in the pharma supply chain in the U.S. and abroad and a move just towards using 2D codes as a carrier. Okay. Right, just a few comments. Giovanni, this webinar was really helpful. Thank you very much. Roxanara, thank you for a great presentation. Tracy, this is very exciting for the consumer. Um, great. Any more? Uh, well, Jean Nangil Lam, data integrity of one country's sales let me just read that. <laughs> Data integrity of one country's sales dynamics can e be easily viewed by other country. Hence, it enables the global penetration. What I am buying is monitored by third eye software. Third eye software. Uh, is he just saying that, you know, the, the, the um, transparency of the food supply chain? Yeah. Um, I think perhaps. Yeah, I think, you know, serialization enables you to see more that's going on in the supply chain because you're tracking yeah. those individual units and all the data that you can put into the serial number that you can have follow it throughout the chain. Yeah. 
Deborah Lyons Garcia, a little bit skeptical. Sounds interesting, but expensive. Expensive, <laughs> yes. Well, you know, no one has come out fully and committed to how much it's costing, but it is it is measured in pennies on the unit. So yeah. one um one <clears throat> one particular pharma company mentioned to me that to the best of their knowledge, they could they could count uh you know, two to three cents more per unit. Okay. Right. I think on that note, we've reached the hour. You, you thought the presentation might be a bit short, but no shortage of questions, <laughs> Janice. Obviously, no. very interesting. Yeah, it's no. really good. Good. So, well, did good. you enjoy Thanks, it? Everyone. Thanks, did enjoy everyone. It? Did you enjoy it? I did. I did. It was fun. The questions right. are the best part. Yeah. Well, as um, as this technology sort of proliferates into uh, the food industry, uh, hopefully we'll have you back maybe uh, next year to, to do another one. Sounds great. Sounds great. And we welcome everyone to contact Mettler Toledo if they have any questions or myself directly um, and follow up. That's absolutely great. fine. Good. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Janice. Thank you. See you soon. Okay. Great. Bye. Right, ladies and gents, uh, we are, um, just to say, uh, having, a, I think, four weeks off now. Uh, so no Food Safety Fridays for four weeks. Boo-hoo. But uh, you can see I've loaded in the sidebar. You can download now all of the Food Safety Fridays recordings, 115. So if you download that Excel and save it on your desktop, you can open that up and at any time of the day or night, weekend, whenever, just click, choose the, a video, watch it, and um, that will keep you going for the next uh, four weeks while we have a, a, a bit of a break. Um, the only thing I've got to do now is issue the certificate, which uh, just hang on a second. I'm trying to do two things at once. Um, so I've loaded now the certificate of attendance in the sidebar. You just click the download now button. Uh, that'll take you to Dropbox. Download the PNG and you can either print and sign it yourself or open it in, uh, let's say, Microsoft Paint and type your name in there. And then uh, you've got a nice certificate of attendance for today. Um, so great. Thanks for uh joining us today and participating and thanks for all your questions and engaging with us it's always uh, nice to have you along uh, watch out for your emails we'll follow up uh, with the slides recording and certificate by email and in three weeks or so we'll start promoting the next food safety fridays webinar so enjoy the rest of your friday uh, have a lovely day and enjoy your weekend take care everybody see you soon thank Bye. you